everyone, Nick of Nicktastic Art. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. It means a lot to me. I thought I would share with you guys how I mix my pigments um, into paints, obviously. So we're gonna take this little journey as a informational guide. You'll see me mix up some pigments a couple different ways. There's not just one right solution. Um, it's gonna depend for you on what pigment you're getting, uh, how your environment is, uh, from uh, temperature to where to show you a couple different options, and you'll see the difference when we mix these. Uh, my personal favorite is uh, the first approach, but I am going to start incorporating the golden gel, the heavy gloss gel, and see how that works. So come on this journey with me. If you'd like, please like, share, and subscribe. What I've got here is mostly a color art, color art pigment. Um, I do have a piggy here as well. I've got ball gown, which is always a beautiful color. Um, but I'm going to mix these basically three different ways to give you guys some options and let you see the consistency as we get through this process. So we're going to get started with using the, the mix that actually comes with, if you get it from Color Art and you get one of their specials, you can actually get this Vivid Polypore. And this is what I use for the most part to wet the pigment um, before adding anything additional. So what I typically do is I add some of this to wet the pigment, and then I do one of two things. I either use my Liquitex pouring medium or I use my acrylic binder. So um, this is an acrylic binder. You can get many different brands but the important thing is that you're looking for an acrylic binding medium. And so if you use an acrylic binding medium, you can um, add that in before you add your pouring medium. Another option is to add the golden extra heavy gel. Now I use the semi-gloss. I know others use the gloss um, and I think it works well both ways, but my preference is the semi-gloss. So we'll be mixing these three different ways. I'm gonna start with my Pineapple Crush. I love this color if you're not familiar with it. It has a really nice transparency and it works well against some other colors. Now I don't have a mask on right now, but you would wanna use one because you do not wanna be breathing in these. So I'm gonna do a healthy heaping teaspoon there and just a little bit more. Right away gonna cover this back up. So the most important thing is to wet your pigment. And in order to do that, again, I'm using the polypore that comes with the color art for this particular one. And I'm gonna add in enough to cover the pigment, not too much because we wanna make sure it gets thoroughly blended through. So if you can see that, you can see as I scoop that over, right, it's gonna need a moment to get into all of this. So we're gonna start stirring it up. And you can see it's getting like a paste. We wanna keep working that paste. And there is no amount of stirring that should not happen. You can stir this and stir this and stir this and keep stirring this and it would be perfectly fine. So we're mo moving through the mixture here, getting the sides up. Isn't that a beautiful color? Oh, I just love this. Making sure all the pigment gets mixed in there. And now that I've got it mostly covered, I'm really gonna mix it. Because we wanna make sure that the, pig, the mica actually gets covered completely, the pigment gets covered completely, and it's no longer got any little, um, if you, yeah, so probably cannot see it, um, but there's little, hopefully it can with the light, Little bits right there, that is not mixed. That's why that looks like that. You can see when I run it like that on the bottom, I can see there's still not clumps. It's not right, the right way to describe it, um, but little bits there. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the polypore just to get it moving a little bit more fluidly and continue to mix. I was mixing up some white and some Prussian blue earlier tonight because I like my colors to 
sit for a little bit, if at all possible. I'm oftentimes too impatient for that to happen. So I'm coming back across the bottom, checking to see if we've got any of those. We have a little on the side over here, so I'm gonna just uh, get that up there. It looks to me like it's very smooth when I spread it out. And that's a good indicator. I've got the completely added in there, all the mixture. Now, there again, there's multiple ways that you can mix this. It's really just a preference. So I am gonna, for this first one, use the Bare Deep Base. So this is Bare Deep Base, and this is the 8300. And this is the least amount, whenever you get a deep base, this is the least amount of titanium white being added to the mix. So we're gonna scoop about two in here. Two big heaps from my spatula. Whoops, I completely missed the cup there. And take that and set that aside. Now there is a little bit of an odor to this, so if you haven't, it's just like when you're painting your house. Um, you're gonna have a little bit of an odor from the paint. So we'll just put that down in case I get on that. And then we're gonna mix, 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 mix. Now that is obviously got a little bit of white in there, so it is going to lighten the color, um, but it dries transparent. So that's the important thing about these deep bases is that they dry transparent. So we're gonna keep mixing, mixing, mixing. All right, now I've obviously, I've got a lot of colors here to mix, so I'm not gonna hold you guys up for all of these, but you can see that's quite thick. It's very thick at this point. And so what I like to do before adding my pouring medium is to thin it a little bit with the Liquitex pouring medium. So in order to do that, one moment, I've got a nice spoon. It's a big spoon. It's very clean right now. I move this closer because this is very liquidy. Don't know if you could get that in the... So this is going to be about two of these, not fully leveled on the top. There's one and then two. Slutty that right off the bottom before I put it over. There we go, okay. Now this is obviously um, very much the same consistency as like as a polycrylic or a polyurethane. Um, if you combine that, a lot of people use that in conjunction with the Bare Deep Base. Um, so you can see that's very much looser, a lot more like water. So we're gonna mix, 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 mix. Now I don't measure because I've been doing it long enough that it's like cooking. You'll get a feel for when something's right, what you're looking for. And I don't use recipes anymore when I cook and I certainly, um, don't use that when I'm mixing my paint. So what I'm looking for is a very, very quick mound that disappears immediately. So when the paint actually hits the bottom surface is what you're looking for. But I'll, I'll show you guys an actual, we're gonna, we're gonna mix three of these um, so I can show you the three different variations of the, of the mixing. But I'll show you a drip test because that is really the critical item here um, is the drip test. Now, I absolutely love the candy apple color from them. And so I definitely know we're gonna use that as well. So we're gonna set this aside for a moment. This will thicken up. Um, so you wanna make sure to test it again after that point. And we'll move on to the candy apple. So again, should be wearing mask when working with these. We're gonna go ahead and grab this one. And you can see it, it looks pinker than it's going to end up looking, but it's a beautiful color. I use the same bowls over for the same colors. This case, um, for some reason, I did an enchanted forest in my candy apple bowl for some reason, but otherwise it's, it's the candy apple mix bowl. So 
Now that we've got a little bit of this in here, you can see the color. I am going to take, and this time I'm gonna wet it with the Liquitex pouring medium first um, and show you guys what it looks like when you add golden heavy gloss to it. So I'm gonna just take this and put it in. Now because this is a thinner consistency, you'll see the mix kind of comes a different way when you, it's not gonna end up like a paste like what we had when we were using the polycrylic. And you can see there's some, has so much shimmer, but it, it, because it's so thin, you can't see when the actual pigment gets fully dispersed in my opinion. Um, so when I scrape it across the bottom, because it's so liquid, I can't, I, I think there's still pigment in here that I need to continue to stir, 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 stir. So as I'm stirring, it's harder for me to tell, taking this approach first, that it's actually dispersing throughout the, the binder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take my golden extra heavy gel, the semi-gloss, and I'm gonna put a stick of that in there. So we're gonna go about that much. It's a good size stick. And we're gonna put that in here as well. Because again, when I'm working with the micas, I'm looking to make sure that they are fully dispersed before I move on and add anything else into them. And for me, at least, the thinner the, the initial item that you put in, the thinner it is, the thinner, um, the harder it is for me at least to determine that I've got the mica fully mixed in. So this should also, if you have any problems with cracking, this would be very beneficial for that purpose also. So we're, we're gonna have to mix like crazy here. I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, so once again, you can see we have a paste or basically what would look like a typical heavy body paint, acrylic paint. And that's the goal. When I smooth it out, I can see that it is fully dispersed. I don't see big um, pieces or chunks of mica in there. So I know that at this point, it is dispersed for me again to be able to go forward now and use my pouring medium. Um, because of the fact that we used the golden um, gel, I might need to add more pouring medium or do a pouring medium and then um, ensure that I'm looking at it from a ratio of maybe I need to spritz some water in there. So don't be afraid of water. That is a viable option for thinning out. Obviously at this point, this is just like a tube paint out of a, like a golden heavy body tube paint. So I wouldn't put water straight away in this per se. You could, there's enough pigmentation in here that you could do that. There are several artists out there that only mix their paints with water um, to achieve their pouring and, and it is an option. Um, but otherwise you could do a couple different things. At this point I could add more of the Liquitex pouring medium. I could, um, use a water flow trial mix. I could use a blend of the um, two different pouring mediums over here. So normally I've got pouring medium pre-mixed here and this is something that I do where I've got a pouring medium, I've got flow trial, and then I make it whatever consistency I need with the rest of it as water. So in this case, we're gonna put the this in here and you guys will see how it moves from the paste to more consistency, like what we have with the crushed pineapple. Again, I'm looking for when it hits the bottom of the paint, the cup of the paint right down there, that it piles for a second and then dissipates. Now, if you're doing a Dutch pour, you need to have thinner paint. If you're trying to do a bloom with cells, you need to have thicker paint. So whatever paint your technique you're going for, you're going to be using, 
you're going to want to stick to what's going to be associated with that. So I'm going to have to mix a lot more. Now, one thing I would say, what I have personally experienced, when I use this, if I don't mix more and mix, mix excessively, um, it's going to be lumpy. You don't want to have a lump at all in your paint. So you can see right now, it is lumpy. And that's because I've used the golden gel. So I have to mix this much more than I would have to mix the first approach that we took. The polypore is really, really nice for getting everything dispersed. Um, if you have any problems with cracking or creasing though, this golden might be the option that you wanna go. So I'm gonna have to keep mixing here. Mix, 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 mix. This one's gonna be the most mixing that we do. And obviously I'm mixing very vigorously. You can see the air bubbles that are getting in this paint. Um, I don't worry about, I'd rather have it fully mixed then worry about air bubbles. So I'm going after it. We're about there. You can see now that that is the consistency that we've been looking for. As I pick it up and pour it down, it's gonna mound just for a minute and then dissipate. So it's almost identical now to the Pineapple Crush, which was the yellow we did. I'd wanna make sure to go through here again though because of that golden gloss the heavy gloss that I don't have any clunks. So that is the second method that you could use to mix your pigments. So the last one I'm gonna show you is gonna be leveraging that acrylic binder. Okay, now I get it like this. Um, Jerry's Artorama has this one. Um, I'm not sure if Dick Blick has it or not, but let's mix up the blue and that way we can say we took a primary color approach. Um, Chris Cecilia is what we're looking at here. And, oops, sorry. Um, just bringing it closer so I don't have to reach. Oh my goodness, so pretty. So we're gonna get that scooped in. About a scoop and a half is what I always do. These are five, four ounce silicone bowls that you're looking at, so if you're trying to gauge four ounce silicone bowl. That's how much we're putting into those. And then our acrylic binding medium, again, it's the same principle. We're going to add enough to cover it to get it wet. Okay, so for consistency, I don't know if you can see that running out. I'll show you here in just a moment. The acrylic binder is very similar to the Liquitex um, consistency. So you can see it's pretty wet, right? It's just moving around. And so again, because it's an acrylic binder, I don't feel like I have the same um, inconsistency in terms of being able to get this mixed. But, oh, what a beautiful color. You can see that I can't really scrape to the bottom to tell if all my mica is mixed. My guy, I keep calling it my, my pigments are mixed. So it's harder to see that it's fully dispersed. Now, from a consistency perspective, technically, since this is an acrylic binder, you don't actually have to add pouring medium, but this is too thin. This is not something that I can work with. So again, if we were going to thicken something that we've mixed, what are our thickening approaches? It's gonna either be to add some of the golden, or add some of the bare, the deep base, right? Those, both of those would, there's another option. And I actually think I have someone, just a moment. Okay, I checked and I did not. I am, so we're gonna go with the Golden Heavy. Um, one of the things I've noticed with the Bear and the reason I'm not a big fan of it is um, my pigments tend to bleed through the back of my canvas a lot more when I use that. I don't know if it's particular to that or why that issue occurs, but um, yeah, definitely. 
getting a lot more bleed through on the back. Again, that's about the size of the dollop. We'll be pulling that dollop down and then trying to rescue all that color we just left on there. Sorry. And we want it all. Such a pretty color. So beautiful though. Okay, we've got that dollop in there. And this is again gonna be a lot of stirring, but I promise you, I think you'll love the results on this. We're at the part where it gets clumpy and you start getting worried. You're like, oh my goodness, this is never gonna mix in. It will, we just have to give it a lot of time. Okay, once again now, this is kind of paste-like. It's like a tube paint. So I am gonna add a little bit of the Liquitex here to get this thinned out before I would add my pouring medium. My traditional pouring medium, again, mostly um, a lot of Floetrol. There we go. That's gonna get us exactly where we need to go and hopefully ensure that we have no lumpy bumpies from the gel. So I'm gonna use my little cups here as a stand. Um, so you can see, I've got my board, and what you want to do to check consistency is put about the same amount of paint on the board. Now, I know this one's going to be heavier than the other ones, but this way we can at least demonstrate that. These two should be about the same. But you need to make sure your puddles are about the same size, because if they're not, they're going to run differently automatically. Get off. There we go. And we'll put the pineapple crush on there. And that looks about the same size. Okay, when we're talking about consistency, I'm now gonna lift it and they're gonna run. And if they run at the same speed, then you can see that you have the same consistency. So, our pineapple is not running as fast as the red. This one was the last, obviously. I knew that was gonna be the case. We weren't, um, we weren't ready for that one really technically. But this one has a tendency to be thinner anyway. It's kind of like the metallics. So the metallics are always gonna be a little bit thinner. This is not enough of a difference that I would worry about it. But depending on your technique, you might wanna reconsider that. So um, this one needs to either be thinned a little bit more or this one thickened up. This one obviously needs to be thinned, but this is the consistency test that everybody's talking about. It's um, when you get really good at it, you'll be able to just tell in the cup the way it falls off the spoon. Again, these two would probably not be a big enough difference that I would be overly concerned about it. This one clearly is. This paint is not gonna move the same no matter what your technique is as these two. So keep that in mind. Anyway, I have a lot of colors to mix up. And so I thought I would just uh, bring you guys along for the ride. I appreciate you stopping by. Please, um, if you feel comfortable, like the video. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd love to have you. Otherwise, uh, take care, guys. Be safe out there. Find your bliss.